Okay, so here are all the parts I need for my snap disk controller circuit. There's the extension cord for getting power from the wall to power the circuit, which I've already chopped off. Here's the other end of the extension cord. Here's the fan, which will be sucking air out of the solar hot air, solar air heater. Um, I've simply connected it to a board right here, and it has a plug on the end. That's nice because in order to wire my fan into the circuit, I'll simply plug it in. That way if I want to try different fans, then I can simply plug and unplug them as needed. Then this part here gets permanently wired into the circuit. Here's my snap disk controller. On the back of it there are two uh, tabs or spade connectors. And to wire my snap disk controller into the circuit, I picked up these terminal disconnects. These are both females. And what I simply do is plug them in. Of course I'll have to uh, connect wire to those uh, terminal disconnects. This wire right here I get from this box. This I get from Home Depot but you can get it from any electrical hardware store. This is household wiring wire. This is the wire that you find inside the walls here in North America. And it comes in a roll. Uh, it's 14 gauge wire. It has to be 14 gauge uh, because the breakers at the breaker panel are 15 amp breakers. So the wire has to be thick enough to handle 15 amps. And since this circuit is going to be plugging into the wall, and, and potentially if there's a short, there could be 15 amps running through it. Um, and I don't want to have that melt the wires. So I want the wire to be able to handle 15 amps. So I use this wire, this 14 gauge wire. Uh, the wire comes with uh, one neutral wire, the white one, uh, black uh, hot wire, and then the bare ground wire. Now to put all these things together in one place, I have this box. This is just a plastic box which I bought somewhere a long time ago. So I'm just adapting it for use here. And uh, what I've done is I've drilled three holes into it. And I have this uh, st these strain reliefs. Uh, to use a strain relief, you simply push one end through the hole so the threads are sticking out the other side. And then you take your nut and you screw it on. So make it nice and tight. You just screw it on till it's finger tight and then you twist this side till you have it oriented the way you want. And there you go, it's nice and tight. So now I've got a hole right here, you put the cable in there, tighten the screws and that holds the cable firmly in place. Three things are going to go in here. Um, there's your uh, wire for getting power from the wall socket. There's uh, your plug for uh, your receptacle for plugging your fan in. And then there is your wires going to the snap disk controller. If this is going to be a metal box, make sure you ground it. Um, this wire coming from the wall socket has, uh, has a green connection on it, a green uh, ground wire. So you just have to connect that somewhere to the metal case. That way if there's a short inside here somewhere and the box becomes live, since the box is grounded, the short will go to ground. If anybody touches it, they won't get a shock. Now to connect all those things together inside the box, I'm going to use morettes. That's a nice, safe way of doing it. This box came only with the orange ones, but I've added a few other ones in here over the years. Um, now, what kind of wires can you connect inside a morette? Well, on the back of the box, it tells you what size. Uh, for example, here it tells me for this orange morette, I can connect 2 to 5 18 gauge wires, or I can connect 1 to 3 18 gauge wires with 1 to 2 16 gauge wires, or 1 to 3 18 gauge wires with four, 1 14 gauge wire. So that's what you can connect inside a morette. And lastly, I have my fuse. Okay, to connect my terminal disconnects, simply trim the wire to about a quarter inch of length, uh, whatever length looks suitable. Inside the terminal disconnect, there's a metal collar here, so I want to push the uh, uh, push the uh, wire in such that the copper part is firmly inside the uh, the metal collar. And then I get a crimping tool like this, which has different sizes here. Uh, it says red uh, 22 to 18 gauge, blue is 16 to 14. This is a 14 gauge wire here, and this connector is for 14 gauge. So I'm going to be putting using the, uh, the blue crimping part here. So I simply put that over the metal collar and squeeze hard. <laughs> These uh, crimping tools come in a variety of different ones. This is actually a fairly medium quality one. It does the job. 
There you go. Now we'll do the other one too. Okay, they're both done. Just bend the ground wire out of the way. I'll need that later inside the solar air heater. Let's just see how well it works. Plug one end in, plug the other end in, and there I've got a nice firm cable for mounting things in, mounting this inside the solar air heater. And it's fairly well insulated as well. There's a little bit of exposed part there, but that's not too bad. Okay, now to start wiring up things inside the box. Uh, this is the extension cord, the one that's going to the wall socket to get power for the circuit. And this is the wire for the snap disk controller. Uh, so what I need to do first is wire in the fuse. And the fuse goes between the hot for the extension cord uh, and the hot going to the snap disk controller. So the red wire is the wire going to the fuse. So I'll just connect those two together with a moret. Now when you're connecting things with a moret, you don't just stick the moret on and start twisting. Uh, the first thing you do is you take your two wires and you twist them together in the direction I'm showing you here. Then you take your moret, put it on and twist it in that same direction. Now to test it, you take your two wires and you pull and if the moret doesn't come flying off and nothing comes out, then you've got a good connection. So now I'll connect the red from the other side of the fuse to the hot or black going to the snap disk controller. Now in this case I'm connecting a stranded wire with a solid wire and it'd be better to do that with some kind of compression uh, technology like a butt connector or something. Uh, but I don't have that. So I'm going to use my red. Now the trick to doing that, first of all, is you cut your solid the normal length, about half an inch. But you make your, so your um, uh, you uh, strip your uh, um, stranded a little longer. So I'll just do that here. I've got a uh, stripper, wire stripper here. There we go. Okay. So once again we're going to twist the wires together. And the reason you made your stranded long is because you're going to wrap it around the solid. And uh, once it's all wrapped together, they're the same length. So then you take your moret and put it on. Ah, that feels good. Now the black wire for the fuse, we're just going to ignore it. It's attached there. We're just going to leave it there and not use it at all. The next thing we need to connect together so we've got the hot coming from the wall socket going through the fuse to the hot to the snap disk controller. So the white wire, which is normally neutral, coming from the snap disk controller is really just a continuation of the hot. Um, so I'll insert my plug. There we go. So I will connect the hot, which is the white wire coming back from the snap disk controller, to the hot, which is actually the black wire, <laughs> going to the receptacle that the fan will be plugging into. Okay, those two are connected together. Next, continuing on from the receptacle, I've got the hot done for the receptacle. Now the neutral coming back from the receptacle goes finally to the neutral for the extension cord. And that completes our circuit. So I'll just connect these two together and then do the grounds. Okay, those two neutrals are connected together now. Lastly are the grounds. So we've got a solid ground wire that goes to the snap disk controller. We have our green ground wire going to our receptacle for the fan. And we've got our green ground wire going to the extension cord for our power input. So I'll just wire those three together. And there we go, there's our grounds. That's the completed circuit. Again, the black wire that's attached to this fuse wire I'm not using. I don't need it. So I'll just tuck everything in here. Lots of room in there, that's good. It's always good when you have an electrical box with lots of room. Everything's nice and neat. Nothing's going to come apart. Okay, next thing is just to tighten up the strain release. Now when you do that, you don't want to tighten them so much that you actually pinch the wire. You just want to make it so the wire can't move. Pinch the wire, then you create a short circuit. There we go, that one's good. Good. Okay. 
and here we go. And this thing is put on the cover, and then that's it. Okay, so here's the solar air heater. It's one that's meant to stick out a window. I'll just show you the front here. I don't have the glazing on right now, so it's good actually because you can see the inside. This is the um, the absorber right here. It's actually a chamber, aluminum, painted black. And uh, the air comes in from the underneath here. So it's outside air. It goes up here in this chamber and back here and into this side, which is actually indoors. There you go. So this is where the air comes in. So the fan needs to go right here and that electrical box will go right here. Okay, this is where the uh, box goes. I'll put some brackets there to firm it up later. Now the snap disc controller is supposed to go inside the air chamber because that's where the hot air is in the very back there. So I've got a little slot here for putting the cable in. Just bend this back. And there we go. So the snap disc controller is in the right place. I'll just turn it around. Why not? Not that it makes much difference. There we are. And then this ground wire. Well, this chamber here, this whole solar absorber um, chamber, is uh, aluminum. And it's all it's all electrically connected. The whole thing. So what I've done is I've screwed a little uh, ground uh, screw right here, and I can put the ground wire and anchor it right there. That way, uh, if there is a short uh, somewhere, and if anybody happens to somehow, I don't know how, but if they somehow touch the metal of the absorber, uh, then they won't get a shock because it'll be grounded. And now for the fan. fan in. Well, okay, the glazing's in place, everything's tied down here. So I'm just going to stick it out there. Waiting for it to heat up, and when it gets hot enough, the fan should turn on. Here's a photo of the solar air heater taken a few years ago when I first built it and ran a bunch of temperature tests. And it turns out that the absorber area was too small to make a useful difference in the room temperature. Uh, but it was a neat idea, an apartment size solar air heater that you could put in your window, just like an air conditioner. Uh, from all the tests I did, I realized that my big south-facing windows on a sunny winter day can heat up the room by 6 to 8 degrees Celsius. I could also open the windows and the cold air coming in would heat up that air. So in the end, I didn't need a solar air heater after all. But the circuit worked great and hopefully it'll work great for you too. You can see my website for more information on this circuit and uh, on the solar air heater.